Hi, my name is Shruti Raikilan, and I am the Program Analyst with the Global Mental Health Program here at GCC. Today, I'm going to walk you through our seed funding call that is focused on mental health and well-being of young people. In this presentation, I'm going to provide an overview of the initiative, our RFPs focus areas, as well as our eligibility criteria. So we want to start with a brief overview of the Global Mental Health Seed Initiative. GCC seeks bold ideas to meet the mental health needs of the most vulnerable young people aged 10 to 24. We are looking for culturally sensitive, community-driven, innovative approaches to enhance mental health literacy and or provide youth-friendly services that account for the complex social and environmental factors contributing to young people's mental health and well-being. In order to be considered, approaches need to engage young people with lived experiences from the start. Innovators are able to determine which approaches work best for their unique context, but proposals must demonstrate some type of meaningful engagement throughout the development and delivery of the innovation. We've chosen to focus on youth mental health for this call because research demonstrates that there's a clear gap in available services and funding for this demographic. 75% of all mental health disorders start before the age of 24, and research consistently shows that poor youth mental health limits health, education, livelihoods, and the formation of positive relationships in communities. Though 40% of the global population is under the age of 24, only 12.5% of development assistance for mental health is targeted towards youth. This translates to roughly 0.1% of the total development assistance for health. So there's a clear gap here that we were aiming to fill. We have a number of focus areas for this request for proposals. And again, innovations must seek to enhance mental health literacy and or provide youth-friendly services. Innovations should also seek to do one or more of the following. Support community environments that promote mental well-being throughout adolescence creatively approach mental health literacy and psychosocial education, working to embed mental health understanding into the broader community, provide effective and affordable youth-friendly community-based care and rehabilitation, foster resilience and advance mental disorder prevention and mental health promotion, integrate mental health services and or well-being interventions into existing education systems, address the mental health needs of young people exposed to violence with a trauma-informed approach, and inventively leverage technology that is highly used and trusted by young people. We're particularly interested in innovations that aim to empower and give a voice to young people, inform local communities, tackle the outcomes of damaging gender norms, support delivering mental health care through youth-friendly, non-health delivery mechanisms, and consider the social determinants of health. All projects are expected to demonstrate measurable change. Innovators are expected to report against any indicators listed in Appendix B that are relevant to demonstrating success of their innovation. Success in this context is defined as evidence from a controlled or limited setting that the innovation improves the mental health and well-being of the most vulnerable young people aged 10 to 24, evidence that the innovation can be feasibly implemented, sustained, and financially supported at scale in the target regions, demonstrated interest, financing, and or commitments for uptake of the innovation from key stakeholders influencers, and partners needed to enable scale and sustainability. We will match youth-led organizations needing, to, needing help to measure outcomes with a third-party expert. You can request the support in the application, but you will need to reserve 15,000 Canadian in your budget and return unused funds to programming costs. For the application, you are still expected to provide an overview of your out execution plan and proposed project activities and goals based on the indicators, but we ask that if you are requesting third party help, you do this to the best of your ability. We don't expect you to include information about metrics or details on the timing and method of evaluation. When reviewing applications, we will be mindful of the addition of third party evaluators who will be able to support on these items should the application be successful. This slide summarizes the parameters of the funding. These are all seed grants for 250,000 Canadian. Um, and they're approximately for, for 18 to 24 months. So again, on the application form, you can select either 18 or 24 for the duration of your, your innovation. Provided that we receive a sufficient number of high quality applications, we're aiming to award 15 grants. Um, and the target beneficiaries are youth between the ages of 10 to 24 in low and middle income countries. So this is about eligibility criteria. We're able to fund any incorporated institution that is not individual. So, this can include nonprofit organizations, academic institutions, and this includes government universities or for-profit companies. So as long as your institution is formed and legally incorporated in an eligible country, and you can find eligible countries in Appendix A, um, 
can successfully execute the activities in respective technical areas, are capable of receiving and administrating grant funding, are not sole proprietorships, again, are not individuals, and are not government offices or UN country offices. So uh, again, these cannot be lead organizations, but you can partner with government offices or UN country offices um, to, to put your proposal forward, provided you, your organization fulfills these criteria. So a project can only have one project lead who must be affiliated with the institution from which the proposal is being submitted. A project lead may only be listed on one application to this RFP. Therefore, if you're a project lead, you cannot be listed as a collaborator or partner on multiple applications. For multiple applications to be considered from a single institution, the applications must each list a different project lead and each project lead must register for their own unique Flux portal account. While collaboration is encouraged, Proposals, again, can only have one project lead, but you have a space in the application for you to list any team members or collaborators. Successful applicants may be able to assign a co-principal investigator during negotiation space if you wish. So we've got a lot of questions about um, what it means to be a youth-led organization. So if your organization has a majority of youth in executive leadership positions, it would be considered a youth-led organization for the purposes of this grant. I want to draw your attention to the age requirement here. So we're considering youth-led organizations to be those who have um, executive leadership under the age of 35. Um, so our beneficiaries for the actual innovation are those between the ages of 10 to 24. However, for leadership of the actual organization, if your organization has those under the age of 35, you're considered a youth-led organization for this grant. We expect that innovators actively work with youth in target communities and use their input to shape the development of the proposed innovation. Priority will be given to youth-led organizations. However, anyone is eligible to apply provided that you fulfill the eligibility criteria outlined before. So this is some of what is not eligible. We will not consider funding programs where implementation activities do not occur in eligible countries. Um, innovations are similar to innovations previously funded by GCC, so we won't fund anything we already have in our portfolio, so please make sure that you look at what we've already funded to make sure that your innovation is sufficiently different. We will not consider funding projects that involve establishing proof of concept of innovations for which the core intellectual property rights are owned by a third-party institution unless the third-party institution has granted the applicant sufficient license rights to the innovation to prevent, permit eventual scaling in low- and middle-income countries or the third party institution is willing to sign an undertaking to GCC's commitment to, apply, to comply with GCC's global access policy. So I realized that was a lot of information. So if you have any additional questions, these are different channels to 